Wishing you all God's grace and blessings. Our today's saint is Saint Mariam Bowadi. Mariam Bowadi was a disguised Carmelite nun of the Melkite Greek Catholic Church. She is also known in religion as Mariam of Jesus Crucified. Bowadi was born on January 5th, 1846, on the eve of Epiphany in the Galilean village. Mariam was the thirteenth child for her parents and first daughter. None of her preceding brothers had survived infancy. She was born after the couple made a pilgrimage on foot to Bethlehem out of desperation after the loss of their children. When they were later blessed with the birth of a daughter, they named her after the Virgin Mary out of gratitude. She was joined by a new brother, Bolus, two years later. Bohadi was not yet three years old when both her parents died. from an illness only a few days apart the siblings were then each taken in by relatives on different sides of her family living in different villages the brother and sister would never see one another again as a child she had a marked spirit of religious fervor enlightened by god mariam's first spiritual premonition On one occasion somehow a snake managed to get into the house and came into the room as she was eating by herself unafraid she picked it up and just then a servant opened the door and seeing the snake and the child he screamed surprised Mariam let go of her hold and the snake escaped while the rest of the family came in running because of the servant's scream The snake incident seemed to be a precursor to her future mystical battles against evil. During her life, Mariam often had visions of snakes, and later her very life as a Carmelite and as a mystic was to be fierce battle against the ancient serpent, who is called the devil or Satan, the seducer of the whole world. But like the women of the Apocalypse, she would emerge victorious. Mariam's childhood devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin was to surround with much tenderness this young girl whose parents had asked for her at the grotto of Bethlehem. Mariam was to be the privileged child of Our Lady. In her honor, from the age of 5, she fasted every Saturday taking only the evening meal to the great admiration and edification of her aunt and uncle who were continually in amazement by the devotion. of such a young child in the spring time she would gather flowers choosing the loveliest and most fragrant from the garden or on the hills of ibilin to place them before the icon of the blessed virgin and what was not to her surprise one day to find that the cut flowers had taken root in the vase she showed her uncle who in turn informed the local pastor in an effort to keep her humble He scolded her as though her sins were responsible for this phenomenon. Mariam fell on her knees, humbled herself, and asked pardon for her sins. What do you think will become of this child? Wondered the pastor, the relatives, and the neighbors at the sight of such a spiritual piety and devotion from a young five-year-old child. Mariam's attempted pre-arranged marriage when mariam was 8 years old her uncle moved his family to alexandria egypt and once again mariam was saddened to leave her home which she had come to love mariam was quickly learning to understand how fleeting the happiness of this world was as suffering and loss seemed to follow her after according to the oriental custom of that time and place Mariam then aged 13 was promised in marriage to her aunt's brother who lived in Cairo the wedding was prearranged without the bride to be his consultation or consent this was a common custom among middle eastern christians as well as muslims mariam's reaction was one of shock and deep sadness for she earnestly desired to give herself to god alone in her great distress She couldn't sleep the night before the wedding ceremony. 
and she prayed fervently that God might intervene on or show to her his holy will in the depths of her heart she heard a voice everything passes if you wish to give me your heart i will remain with you mariam knew it was jesus's voice the one the only spouse she would have jesus the remainder of the night was spent in deep prayer before the icon of the virgin mary beseeching her for her help Having dozed off for a moment, she suddenly heard within her a voice which said, "Mariam, I am with you. Follow the inspiration. I shall give you. I will help you." In the morning, Mariam informed her uncle that she wouldn't marry. Uncle then beat Mariam and screamed his rage at her in subordination and disobedience to his order. This did not change Mariam's mind. Mariam's heart was deeply saddened. that she had upset her uncle but she stood firm in her resolve for her love for god was greater than anything else in punishment her uncle then resorted to have her treated as the lowest household servant giving her the most difficult kitchen tasks and subjecting her to a position lower than his hired help mariam was dearly depressed she wrote a letter to her brother inviting him to come and see her in alexandria Mariam's martyrdom and miraculous cure through the blessed virgin mary in her isolation from her uncle's family she turned to a muslim servant to have him deliver her letter to nazareth for his part the young man encouraged mariam to reveal her personal troubles he became outraged at her uncle's treatment of her and played upon the mind and feelings of the young girl he introduced conversion to islam as a remedy to mariam's problems His words and actions focused young Mariam directly upon her Christianity. However, she soon realized the young man's true intentions, and this caused her to draw back. She denied his advances and loudly proclaimed her faith in the Church of Jesus. Muslim? No, never. I am a daughter of the Catholic Church, and I hope, by the grace of God, to persevere until death in my religion. which is the only true one her so called protector furious at being rejected by this young christian became violent eyes flashing with hatred he lost control and kicked her to the floor he then drew his sword and slashed her throat thinking her dead he dumped her bloody body in a nearby dark alley it was a feast of the birth of the blessed virgin mary September 8, 1858. What followed was a strange and beautifully moving story, told years later by Mariam to her mistress of novices at Marseille in France. A nun dressed in blue picked me up and stitched my throat wound. This happened in a grotto somewhere. I then found myself in heaven with the Blessed Virgin, the angels, and the saints. They treated me with great kindness in their company with my parents. I saw the brilliant throne of the most holy trinity and Jesus Christ in his humanity. There was no sun, no lamp, but everything was bright with light. Someone spoke to me. They said that I was a virgin, but that my book was not finished. She then found herself once again in the grotto with the nun dressed in blue. How long did Mariam remain in the secret shelter? She later spoke of one month, but she was not sure. One day, the unknown nurse prepared some soup for her. That was so delicious that she greedily asked for more. In all her life, she was to remain the taste of this heavenly soup. Mariam's call to religious life. Towards the end of her sojourn in the grotto. The nurse in blue outlined the Mariam her life's program. The scan on her, the scar on her neck remained the rest of her life. As a result of this deep cut, Mariam's voice was always hoarse. She was only 13 and was now on her own. At first, she supported herself by working as a domestic servant. Her spare time she devoted to the less fortunate. appearance of an angel in mariam's life 
One day in the streets of Jerusalem, a young man, very handsome and with an air of sincerity, came up to her and began a conversation. She was 15 years of age. The conversation was one of the great delicacy. The young man spoke to her in praise of perfect chastity. Some days later, he met her again, said his name was John, George, and offered to show her the way to the Holy Sepulchre. Having arrived at the holy place, she promised her mysterious guide that would take a perpetual vow of virginity if he would do the same. And thus it was that, at the sacred edifice, on the very place of the glorious tomb of the risen Lord Jesus, these two young people became children of the resurrection by pronouncing the definitive vow of chastity. In addition to this, she had Saint Joseph appearing to her frequently. Finally, in her efforts to follow her vocation, Father Abdu was of great help to her. A postulant at the Capelet in Marseille, France, she made a fresh attempt at the Sisters of Saint Joseph of the Apparition, founded by Emily D. B. Allar. For was it not Saint Joseph who had appeared to her repeatedly in the street? encouraging her to become a nun. Thus, the first part of the occasion that had been given to her by the Blessed Virgin had been realized, for she was now a daughter of Saint Joseph. An ecstasy and the first appearance of the stigmata. Her fellow sisters were always amused by her broken French, but they were most impressed by her remarkable virtues and piety. The stigmata of the heart was the first to be manifested. She was 20 years of age and it happened in August 1866 at Marseille. She was praying in the chapel one evening when in the tabernacle she saw Jesus, who appeared to her with his five wounds on the crown of thorns. It seemed to her she saw coals of wrath in his hands. She heard Jesus say to his mother, prostrate at his feet. Oh, how my father is offended. The little postulant then sprang toward Jesus. She put her hand on the wound of his heart, exclaiming, My God, give me please all these sufferings, but have mercy on sinners. Coming out of the ecstasy, she saw her hand covered with blood and she experienced a severe pain in her left side. The latter would bleed every Friday. Finally, Mariam enters the Carmelites, becomes Sister Mary of Jesus Crucified. Mariam had a special devotion to the Holy Spirit. Mariam's devotion to the Holy Spirit was not common in her time and yet her spiritual journey seemed to be guided by the Spirit in unprecedented ways. Inspired by having received a special prayer to the Holy Spirit during one of the ecstatic experiences, she was convinced that devotion to the Holy Spirit, who was then commonly known as the Paraclete, was needed by the whole church. She even sent a petition to Pope Pius IX, asking him to cultivate a greater devotion within the church to the Holy Spirit. No one knows what the Pope thought of this at that time. But 20 years later, Pope Leo XIII published an encyclical about devotion to the Paraclet. Concerning devotion to the Holy Spirit, Mariam wrote, The world and the religious communities are seeking novelties and devotions, and they are neglecting true devotion to the Paraclet. That is why there is an error and disunion, and why there is no peace or light. They do not invoke light as it should be invoked, and it is this light that gives knowledge of truth. It is neglected everywhere. Every person in the world that will invoke the Holy Spirit and have devotion to Him will not die in error. Mariam's Prayer to the Holy Spirit First there is her famous little prayer to the Holy Spirit, prayed by people all over the world. Holy Spirit, inspire me. Love of God, consume me. Along the true road, 
lead me. Mary, my mother, look upon me. Will Jesus bless me from all evil, from all illusion, from all danger? Preserve me. Her holy death on January 5, 1878, Sister Mariam entered her 33rd year of life. In August 1878, she broke her left arm when she fell while carrying water to the workmen in Bethlehem, whom she was helping to build the new Carmelite convent. Her arm would not heal, but rather swelled with gangrene, and the infection spread to her lungs and respiratory tract. She knew she was dying. Through her suffering, she renewed her vow as a victim for the Church and for her adopted country, France. On August 26, 1878, she felt as if she were suffocating, and died soon after murmuring, "My Jesus, mercy." It was ten minutes past five in the morning. Like her Jesus, she died at the age of thirty-three. I conclude that this life story gives us an understanding that in the depths of our heart. We too will hear a familiar, similar voice which Mariam heard, which constantly says, "Everything passes. If you wish to give me your heart, I will remain with you. If we pay attention, for sure we too can hear this voice, and that is the voice of God. That is the inspiration by the Holy Spirit, and it is the invitation by our Blessed Mother to each one of us." to embrace god's love in our lives we pray to